Hello, I'm Pat Ponticell from Automotive Engineering International Magazine here at the SAE 2012 World Congress in Detroit. With me is Paul Heitman, Manager of Utility Solutions for Ecotality. Welcome, Paul. Thanks, Pat. Now, Ecotality is one of the bigger, if not the biggest, player in the charging market. How did the company get to be so big, so important? Uh, well, our heritage actually starts with the days of the EV1 back in the 90s. Um, initially developing charging stations for that first wave, that went away. The focus turned to industrial chargers to keep going, knowing that electric transportation on the highway would come back, and came back with a bang, and we were awarded the EV project. So we're the biggest charging deployment, charging station deployment in the country. Yeah. And who are your customers? Customers fall into a variety. Uh, the EV project is focused at participants that own the cars, so a big segment of that is the residential customers that want to put them in their garage and participate in the program. Uh, in addition to that, we're deploying a fairly widespread commercial, public accessible, uh, to round that out so that these communities have both public and, and residential home charging. Um, those sponsors could be commercial hosts like uh, strip malls, uh, name brand department stores, municipalities, uh, some utilities uh, on the public sector. Right. You mentioned the EV project. Can you talk a little bit about that? What is it? Uh, EV project is, as I said, the largest EV infrastructure the deployment project. It's designed to instrument and collect data on how people drive their electric cars, where they charge. Um, overlapping that are different utilities in different areas that have maybe different rate structures that will influence behavior on charging. And it's collecting all of that data, terabytes of data back, and studying patterns that make the real wave of full deployment uh, more intelligent, more efficient. Okay, very good. And I presume that your company is more than just a maker of charge stations. It, it, they do more than just deliver electricity. Is there... uh, you're absolutely right. Um, in fact, we like to call ourselves the, the intelligent charging solution. Uh, it's been branded Blink, and Blink is, represents the equipment that's at the interfaces for charging the cars but it's also the layer of software and systems behind that that collect and manage all that data. And ultimately, our customers include utilities that have a very strong interest in observing load patterns and over time maybe even influencing those with uh, demand response programs and other kind of intelligence-based control schemes for this charging load. So really what Blink is is an uh, intelligent platform for enabling that in the future as tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of cars come on the market. Mm -hmm. And of the products you have on the market today, uh, are they all performing well? Yes. Well, I mean, our deployment, it's a pretty compressed deployment of 12,000 chargers. Uh, you know, we've had some normal issues of just uh, moving things through maturity cycles. Um, the entire system is designed to be over-the-air upgraded. So as new software releases come and more capabilities come, it can be pushed out over the air to the previously deployed uh, chargers. That's going very well. So er everything is running well. We're collecting that data. And you can get the reports now on the Idaho National Labs uh, website or our uh, EV project website. And do all the chargers use the J1772 connector or do some use other connectors? Uh, all of them use the, would you like me to show sure. you the chart, the uh, connector? Okay. If you take a look here, uh, what Pat was referring to was the J1772. It's an SAE standard now. Um, this is on all or most uh, cars sold in the United States. Uh, this charger delivers a seven kilowatt charge through this standard J1772. And it allows, basically allows customers to recharge a 100 mile range in uh, as little as three hours if it's the fast onboard uh, converter, 6.6 .6 kilowatts, like the, Ford, the new Ford has. Uh, the, the older ones, the 3.3 .3 kilowatts, it's a little longer, maybe five hours. But literally an overnight charge. And for a public setting, uh, same connector, same standard, if you pulled into your Walmart or some you know, a shopping center and you were shopping for an hour or two anyway, you'd plug in and you'd be able to get at least 15, 20 miles of range extension. So it's more of a convenience uh, top-off for the commercial, but definitely an overnight. There's another connector in development, the SAE so-called combo connector. 
Yes. Uh, will that right. be incorporated into future products and retrofitted to existing products, or, or how are you going to manage that? The um, For the level two AC charge, that's what I described there, the J1772 is the standard. For the fast charge, which is uh, almost 10 times as much as, as this, we do have a product of that. We don't have it displayed here. Um, later on, you can get a picture of it. There's the picture. We call it our DC fast charge. But that's designed with a different connector. It's called the Chatamo standard connector. It's been adopted in Asia. The EV project included deploying those units, too, to study, again, another variable if people could charge at a reasonably fast rate versus a super fast rate, what's the behavior on that? So we are deploying those fast chargers, and that is the Chatamo standard. But right now, in fact, just yesterday I heard that uh, this final committee release of the U.S. version of that connector is uh, coming for vote and, and will soon be available. And our intention is to incorporate that new connector into our product um, as that's available. Great. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome.